All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is the registration a little bit deeper, right? We're gonna talk about the registration um, and the way the tracking can uh, and should be done, right? So in this instance, I've, I've actually done a small little example. And what I've done is I've actually added some extra things to this. Oh, so you've heard me mention in the prior video that you know you want to monitor your your arm and, and not arm unless you're running, right? So what I did, I said, okay, my servo has action and it is running, then my action status is here, right? So I put my action status in front of it. And what I did is I also added a Rockwell feature that Rockwell recommends that you put a, a you know, an, an arm bit in here basically saying, okay, well, if you're in IP, then go ahead and arm. Okay, so, and then what it does is it says, okay, if you're in IP, go ahead and make a small bit that says arm and then add it here in the counter effect so it doesn't arm again in the same token right now we have extra protection up here to, to hinder that from happening but in Rockwell's best practice what we've done is we've added the, their logic as well so and this is this is saying too that if the counter side if this is not actually in PC if it's not in PC then it is armed as well okay so there's two extra things right so we wanted to add that in there and I've also added the servo um, several action off right here to actually turn the action off over here so when you look at it at the way it's going to actually work <clears throat> and the status is currently off right now right so if i were to turn it on if i were to just click the button right now it's not going to do anything right so i'm actually you know sim simulating if you would the input going to the actual you know kinetic 6000 I'm, I'm simulating that with a push button, which again in your terms would be a photo eye or it would be a proc switch or something of this nature, something that would be high speed or counter, uh, something that would actually be representation of that. But in our case, what we're doing is this registration uh, input. So if I were to go back down to my trend right here, you would just see the registration input coming high, right? So that actually shows that and is exactly the way it's working right now. So that is a little bit of extra protection I put in there for that instance. So we, we will be running the system in this instance, right? So I'm actually going to show you running the system. I'm actually going to show the uh, the full system running, but it so it will begin a little, maybe you hear, hear some background noise in the video or whatever, but uh, for the sake of that. And again, if you have video quality issues, just so, so we cover that, then the bottom right hand corner of the video player, there is a gear icon. You can click that gear icon and change the video quality. Now that is based upon your internet connection. I do record in 1080p and in 4K, right? So we do have crystal clear quality and you should be seeing it just as you were programming it yourself. So it should be really, really, really clear. You should see all the wording and everything's, I mean, really clear. So uh, with all that said, uh, so we've added some extra controls down here. Now what I've done too, so we are, I've explained this, right? I've explained the scenario up here and I've also added this scenario down here. So if the PC, which is the process complete bit, is is um, active, if it's a, a one, then I wanna grab the actual servo position. Now, I'm gonna utilize that servo position in our, our um, up here in our product tracking, which is our event driven, based upon our event driven task, based upon the actual registration input of the servo that we're running and again we're saying it's a priority of four we can change the priority for whatever we want we can say it's a priority of one if we want to um because i mean it, it just a matter it's just a matter of what the priorities lay and uh the priority of scanning inside of the processor and this processor is not really demanding again i'm just running a simulator i'm running a trainer so it's not really that's that demanding so um in this case i'm not going to execute uh, if no event happens. And so I want to execute only if any event happens. So you do not see the process complete bit come on right now. So what I've done is I've added this logic in here that says, and if you look, so this down here gets the registration position, right? I'm actually getting the, I've made that tag. And what I'm doing is I'm coming in here, loading the registration position into position one and then loading position one into position two. So immediately when it comes in, I'm gonna load position one into position two. I'm gonna load the registration position in position one. I'm gonna say if the position one is greater than position two, 
then I want to take position one and minus it by position two and then that's going to give me my product length now this is a very 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 simple example right so this is not by far not a, a something that you should you, sh you should be doing to get the product length as far as you know th there's much deeper code and better code that you can actually be doing I'm just giving you a, a simulation example so that you can get your head wrapped around the process a little bit so um, in this case what we need to do okay so um, we're gonna pull up our trend our trend is running right we can see that our trend is running if I push the button we're gonna actually start the system <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start the system come over here and I'm gonna start the system running and you'll see it start okay so now it's running you can see it's actually running now in this case what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our program and now we have the action status so now we're armed okay we're actually coming in here we're armed so now we're gonna come in here and grab our position so what I want to do is actually pull up the registration right here and show you that this is still working the same way it was right so all of this is still transitioning all this is still working now I'm going to come up here to my registration this is the event driven okay this is going to be the event driven task that's off of my registration I'm going to come in here and I'm going to actually get the product linked okay so I'm just pushing the button I'm going to push it quite regularly all right, so that way you can get a, a more look and feel of the actual registration. So what we can do is we can take this final product length and put that in the trend as well. So let's do that. Let's go into the trend so that you can see it better. And let's come over here and let's go to, to the pins and let's add the final pin in here. Let's paste it in there and let's grab it right here. So when you first paste it, it doesn't take, so I want to grab it. And then we're going to give it a different color. So I think the colors that we used, I'm not sure if we use yellow yet. So we give it a yellow. <clears throat> okay, so let's run this real quick. And let's show that. So that now I'm going to push the button pretty frequently to give the product length. So you can see the product length on the very bottom changing. All right. Now again, if and this is this this is made for really a really really high speed system, so that's why the product length is not, and it's based upon me pushing it. So um, if you looked, it might not be you know as perfect as it should be, right? Because obviously this is tracking a ones and zeros. So if we want to, we can we can kind of change this a little bit more now that we have something else in here. So let's actually go raise that up to uh, a five. And let's take the saturation down, or take this isolation down, or actually let's, let's take that 30. Oh, I can only go one, 0 through 10 because of all the stuff I have in there, which is fine. All right, so we can do percentage of scale, and then come in here and do that. So now we can look at our product length a little bit better. And again, it, it, it's going to vary again when it comes down to it because I'm, I'm pushing the button. But what I want to do is highlight the fact of you can see it transitioning. Right. And if you look at our registration up here, this is what we're kind of going after. See that? This is like a negative um, or not a negative, but it, it's basically uh, what's it? 0.75 or 0.79. So if we come over here. And we um, let me see if I can get the, the actual pattern. And this is actually the reason that, that, that this is working this way is because of the scan rate of the course rate update. So the course rate update again is is very much. Let's change the priority of this. So I think it's a little too high right now. Let's change the priority of this to maybe like a four. And <clears throat> come in here and see what that does. See if that helps it out a little bit. I'm going to try to get the, the um, I mean, just simulating this button. And we can speed it up a little bit too. So let's speed up the process. So we get a, a lot better length. And just like you would, right, say this is a conveyor belt running. And you were monitoring a conveyor belt. You can see that 
the the faster the conveyor belt will run like say for instance your photo eye would trigger quicker right or whatever the product passing by that photo eye would would pass by quicker so you're going to get a different outcome right you're going to get a much more frequent outcome it's going to stay the same the only reason it's varying so much with me right now is because i'm sitting here pushing the button so if, let's pop open the trend again and you can see that right you can see me pushing the button and you can see that so if I got on a, a set pattern, you can kind of see that it's exceeding that pattern, right? So you can see the length is changing quite a bit. But again, I'm uh, the the frequency and how fast this thing is scanning, and how fast I can push this push button, which is kind of a push button. Honestly, is not the best representation of this, but I think it was good for a good solid, you know, training atmosphere so that you can understand how to get the length of something, right? So now you can see the length, right? So basically we're just, all we're doing here, so I'll actually, actually let's come in here and open the registration again so you can see all this running. So you can see the P, when the PC comes in, it grabs that position. So you see when it, it's actually grabbing the position, right? So every time I get a PC, it grabs the position. So, and this is the, this is where the benefit to all this comes in play, right? So again, we'll come in here. Now we'll stop our system. Okay, so we'll stop our system. Come over here, and I'll actually show you that. So now we can push our, our button, and we're not going to get anything, right, up here in this this tracking system. We're not we're not going to get any any trying to kind of transition because. No matter how many times we push this button, it's not going to change positions. It's not going to work because, well, we're not we're not actually triggering it, right? So if you think about, it, this is the the benefit to what we're doing. Actually, let's pull up the actual uh, task. This is the benefit to what we're doing, is because we're looking at the registration input, we're looking at the servo, and we're looking at everything as far as that goes, and we're disabling the automatic output processing during uh, so to reduce overhead. So. Or it's pretty simple and again you can look at the overhead um, the max times and stuff like that the scans and stuff like that so if I cut it on again you can look at the scan rate and actually determine how it's running so we're gonna do that real quick so you can see it's cycling now now it's only taking the max you can see the the scan times are the max right the intervals between time between scans you can see that's the intervals between times the minimum is basically what 380 milliseconds right now and the maximum is well it's well exceeding <laughs> quite a bit so I can reset these and check these out and that's where I can tell how frequently the task is being ran that's where I can actually determine how frequently the task is being ran based upon the button being pushed. Now if I stop pushing the button, it obviously stops and it doesn't get any triggers and in intervals. So if I push the button again, you'll see that. And this is a good way to determine and show you the way a task is scanned because a lot of question gets rolled around about like scan times. Well, in scan times, the time it takes to actually scan is going to be up here the intervals between scans is going to be here and if there's any task overlap it's going to be here so this shows you that as i push the button very 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 this is the the most uh i guess solid education you can get as far as like when it comes to time stamping and understanding the, the way a program scans when it comes to you know like ser controlling servos and understanding timing understanding the way you should be you know interpreting your task and stuff like that and the reason that's the reason really why I wanted to break this down as much as I did on an arm um, so let's stop it again so that's the reason I wanted to break it down as much as I did on a arm command because when you come down to it this is the best you can be like so and you've seen that too when I disarmed right here it cuts off the actual arm so before when we had it, it it wasn't cutting off the arm because of the simple fact of I didn't have the uh, motion axis uh, our action status in there 
right? So now the motion action action status is actually turning off, is disarming the uh, the attribute to actually monitor that event, right? So no matter how many times I actually push that button, it's not going to do anything, right? Because it doesn't care. This over here doesn't care. The servo controller doesn't care. I mean, so when at that point in time, we're not monitoring any events, so we're not doing anything. And this is this is kind of the I wanted to show you this as a more real world scenario because it really really sinks into having things working right. So when we start tying in real devices, tying in real things, and try to simulate real things, you get to see more fluently how things should be working. Now, granted, I can't push this push button, this simple little push button I have, right? And I'll actually show you this on the screen again. I can't push this push button. I can't push it quick enough, right? So when it comes down to it, um, as far as how fast this wheel is turning is based upon that. Now, it doesn't matter if the wheel is turning or not, it's not going to do anything, right? It, it, it's basically on only when the action status is coming on, right? So it doesn't matter if the wheel is turning, it matters if the servo is in action. When do we know if the servo is in action? This little green light. All right, that's that's when we know when this that we've actually commanded the servo. And again, I've I've actually built this quite a bit. So I mean, as far as the trainer servo, uh, the way things come on and turn off and stuff like that, and the way things are controlled, very very uh, sophisticated. But when it comes down to it, this is breaking into understanding how timing is done, how how arms are done, how registration is done on a kinetic six thousand drive. And again, this breaks down, the same theory of operation breaks down to sit motion and the kinetics 5700, 5500s, as far as doing other things as well. We have other servo drives that we may actually bring into the mix and start doing. But again, I'm just now getting some other stuff in, so I don't want to rush anything. I want to make sure that we get the good, solid educational training and do things properly. So uh, when this comes down, I wanted to actually give you a solid implementation of showing you how this could work with our trainer scenario that we've actually built and we've been building as we go. So as this is actually running, you can actually see it and fluently see the, the actual process running. So if I hit the start button, you can see the process running. Just that simple. And I can control the speed based upon here. I can ramp everything up as fast as I want to. And you can see that changing right there. Now if I come in here, it's like, and that, that's actually running pretty fast. And again, this is all running off a 110 system. So if I come in and get different points, now my registration is going to be a lot longer than it was because again, I can't, I'm pushing a button, right? So if this was a photo eye, this was a conveyor or a proc switch or something getting flagged when a, a proc, like a product, piece of product went by based upon the, the speed of a, a, you know, of a, of actual, you know, conveyor or, or say for instance, like uh, something that was, you know, holding it and travel, making it travel past something, then it would be a lot more accurate. So um, with that said, I wanted to at least give you an example and give you some kind of thing to wrap your head around to say, oh, well, this is the way this works, right? This is a simple, simple example, right? So uh, when it comes down to it, this is uh, the registration calling. And again, it cut off, it disabled the arm and uh, now we don't have anything there. So I just wanted to actually show you that and show you an active scenario, an active system working so that you got a better sense of clarity on that. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and we'll see you guys on the next one.